All right slash x slash, I have a story for you. I've never told this to anyone before and today, in the hope of getting some answers, I decided to post this on slash x slash. Be around two years ago. Be me, your everyday German dude. Had a group of friends from childhood. Let's call them rich dude, a really rich kid whose dad got into the steel business and made it big. Black dude, a white kid who really wanted to be black, but was still fun to hang out with and nerd dude, the title is self-explanatory. As kids, we all had one common interest, fucking Scooby-Doo. So, when we got older, we were seriously into haunted houses. Since we lived in Germany, Berlin at that time, we had plenty of abandoned World War II places, battlefield sites and a shitload of haunted legends. We all practically grew up getting the shit scared out of us. So, after we graduated from high school, rich dude invites us on a trip around Europe. None of us are as rich as him so he practically finances the whole trip, tbh none of us wanted to take a handout but we were all as close as family, so we said thanks and went with it. We went to Amsterdam first, we saw tons of haunted places, one particularly memorable one was our trip to Beardsley Castle. The place was a fucking joke. Remember, we grew up sneaking into abandoned World War II bases so nothing practically scared us. After a bunch of visits to different cities, we decided to go to Prague. Czechoslovakia is pretty famous for its hauntings but tbh we didn't really see anything special. In the end, black dude, who spoke Slovak, told us about this really haunted place, Hauska Castle. Since we had nothing to do till we were set to go to Kiev, we decided why not. The place, for those of you who don't know, is surrounded by a huge S forest, so nerd dude suggested that we camp out there. We were all really into the prospect, so rich dude got us some camping supplies and we were on our way. But, it turned out that the castle was apparently blocked off by the government, being the idiots we were, we decided to sneak in at night. After sneaking in, we thought of immediately going to the castle but we decided to march on deeper into the forest to make sure any patrols didn't catch the smoke from the campfire. I remember that after an hour or two, we came across a big ass gate. Literally, one of those fancy old ones that we just lay in the middle of the forest. It looked old, and it definitely wasn't iron because it would have rusted. We took a bunch of pictures and decided to move on. Now here is where it starts to get weird. As we kept moving on, we kept hearing noises. At first it was the wind rattling the bushes and the sound of the leaves. We had been doing this nearly our entire lives so this didn't even scare us. Then, the wind starts blowing really bad, and nerd dude suggests that we ought to set up camp. We all listen and do our best to set up camp while the wind is fucking everything over. Then, all of the sudden, it suddenly stops. Literally, all noise just stops. Still not freaked out but noticeably alert. Rich dude pulls out his gun, don't as how he has won, and nerdud pulls out a book and some salt. Yeah, we had these contingency plans just in case. Black dude, easily the most fearless of us, decides that we need to take advantage of the wind and set up camp. Forget everything and we all help him. Eventually have everything set up and we all decide to retire for the night. I had some shit tear nightmares that night, I can't remember what they were but holy shit I woke up covered in sweat. Wake up, get dressed and get outside. Everyone, excluding black dude looks like shit. Rich dude pulls out his GPS and tries to find the castle. Then, the worst possible thing happens. GPS not working. We all panic and reach for our cell phones. Dead. That's not fucking possible, we charged them before coming up here. We're all pretty alarmed, we're not scared of two spooky for me ghosts but survival in the wild. We all decide to pack up and try to retrace our steps. While doing this, we end up more lost than when we started. Panic is beginning to set in, when we hear something loud behind us. All of us are on edge, so rich dude whips around holding his gun and shouts, come on out. At his command, a guy comes out of the forest, surprising us all. 
He's holding his hands up but he looks majorly annoyed. He looks at us all pretty angrily and asks us, what are you people doing here? The way he said, you people, was pretty weird thinking back on it. Also, to describe him, he looked weird. He looked around 6 1, had white skin and was wearing the weirdest clothes ever. He was wearing a bloody cloak. The weirdest thing was that he had a perfect face. Like, the kind you see in Didi zines, literally perfect. Not a single acne mark or flaw. He didn't even look human. The guy looked pretty mad. Black dude, who by the way was not just a wannabe black guy in appearance, took offense to this. Now, a little backstory here. Black dude was a wannabe alpha, he got beat up a lot because he didn't know when to shut up. So, he started learning some martial arts or something, can't remember, and he eventually became the toughest motherfucker around, this made his attitude worse because now he could back up his threats. Black dude goes up to the guy and is nose to nose with him and calls him a bitch and asks him what the hell he's doing here. Cloaked dude looks annoyed now, just before a fight can start rich dude puts on his ass kissing face and gets between them. He settles the situation and asks him who he is. The guy doesn't respond but looks much less annoyed. He tells us that we really should leave. We're a bit relieved and ask him how to get out of here. At this he nearly jumps back. You mean, you don't know how to get back? We all tell him that we're lost. He looks completely paranoid now. We all ask him what's wrong with him. The guy's face shifts back to what it was before and he tells us that we should do our best to find our way out. We're all confused as fuck and black dude, who seems more pissy than usual, tells us that he doesn't like the guy. When we ask him why, he just says, you know man, just something wrong with him. He starts to leave the way he came, the guy is seriously fast. Weirdest thing was, he wasn't even running, he was just, gone. We chase after the guy asking for help but he's already gone. Eventually we decide to screw it and go back to trying to get out of the stupid ass forest. As the sun goes down, we decide to set up camp again, but we're out of butane so we can't build a fire. When night time comes, things get weird. We're all trying to sleep but we all keep hearing sounds and noises from the forest. The sounded weird. They sounded weird, all right. Like the sounds of a fight or something. Lots of grunting and shouting. And weird shouting, not the human kind. The wind is seriously string but the trees don't seem to be moving much. Black dude convinces us to go investigate. For the first time, we're a bit cautious but we grab the gun, a torch and some other shit and head towards the noises. As we head towards the noise, we start feeling really creeped out. And trust me, we haven't felt this kind of feeling since we were 12. Nerd dude seems to be getting the worst of it, he's clutching his Quran and reciting the Durud Sharif. As we get closer, the IR seems to be ice cold, something that definitely should not be happening in June. And then, when we get to where the noises were coming from, there's nothing. Just an empty clearing. We're all relieved that the noises are gone, but then a shiver goes up our spine and we all turn around. No, seriously, we turned around like some synchronized dance move in a Bollywood film. Just as we move, something quickly darts out of our vision. Gun dude, in his eternal wisdom, whips out his gun and fires three rounds. That breaks the spell and we all ask him what the fuck. He tells us that he saw something white and on all fours move way too fast. We all say we should move back to the campsite and sleep, even black dude agrees. One issue though. We couldn't find the campsite. Okay, timetapanic.jpg. That was not fucking possible. We made sure to walk in a straight line and keep track. Everyone is blaming each other, something was wrong guys. We were honest to goodness brothers, we never did this before and one time we got trapped in an abandoned World War II base. I didn't feel right. Still, I managed to bring everyone under control and we managed to find a clearing where we can at least rest. Now, we pick watches, I get the first watch and so on. 
But, rich dude seemed oddly angry to part with his gun. As I took the first watch, I couldn't help but look up. There was barely any moon but the amount that was there seemed to completely be blocked out by the forest. Another weird thing was that the trees seemed to be curving inwards. Like, they were trying to contain us or something. When my watch came to an end, I woke up nerd dude and handed him the gun. I fell asleep pretty easily, considering the circumstances. I had more nightmares that night but nothing compared to being woken up by black dude screams. I wake up and black dude is ranting like a higger. Shyth songrei.gif, I ask rich dude, who looks pissed, what's going on? He tells me that nerd dude never woke him for his watch. He was gone, we couldn't find nerd dude. We did however, find the gun, empty. We're all pretty angry slash worried slash creeped out. We looked for nerd dude but it looked like he just vanished. No footprints, nothing. We're pretty sure that he took the bullets for some reason, because the sound of a gunshot would have woken us all up. While we're calling for him, we find another stranger. This time it's a chick. And I'll be damned if it isn't the hottest girl we've ever seen. Literally flawless face, and is wearing a cloak very similar to the one we saw on that guy earlier. She seems to be pretty pissed at us for being here in general. When we explain that we're lost, his face becomes white. She doesn't reply after that and asks us, and I shit you not, has one of you gone missing? We're all alarmed by that. Black dude, Nerdudud's best friend, is about to kick her ass. He starts screaming at her and asks her what she knows about Nerd Dude. We try to calm him down but he rushes at her, intent on kicking her ass. Then, the weirdest thing happens. The girl doesn't even react but catches Black Dude's punch and kicks him straight in the nuts so hard we hear something snap. That should not have been possible. Black Dude us buff and fast as fuck, no person should have been able to catch his punch. It's at that moment, I think that we're not dealing with a person, after all. She looks a bit pissed but just walks off while we tend to Black Dude. Rich Dude chases after her but comes back without a clue to where she went. Then, while we're still looking for Nerd Dude, we find our old camp. And guess who's just sitting opposite the remains of the fire? Fucking Nerd Dude. When he stands up so we can see him, he has this weird full face smile on his face. Like a Cheshire grin or something. First thing we feel is relief that he's fine, the second is anger. We're all pissed at him for walking off but he apologized profusely, saying he had to use the facilities, we're pretty sure he meant toilet and found the camp. When we ask him about the ammo and the gun, he's surprised and for the first time, that creepy smile drops. He tells us he doesn't know what we are talking about and we agree, after a heated conversation, to drop it. We start making plans on how to get out when nerd dude starts giggling. It starts as a chuckle but then becomes a full-blown laugh. We're all a bit creeped out and black dude, fearless motherfucker he is, asks nerd dude what's wrong with him. He just says that he was in remembrance. We're a bit confused but nerd dude has always been a bit weird. We don't want to leave the camp, so when night falls, we just stay here. Later that night, Rich Dude and Black Dude woke me. They're saying that something's wrong with Nerdud and we need to go out and check what's going on. I suspected it too, so after a conversation on what to do we decided to go outside and look around the camp area, but we'll keep track this time to avoid getting lost. We all head out, and make sure not to disturb Nerd Dude in his tent. As we head out, the air gets chilly again and it's literally freezing cold, like, we could see our breath cold. Then, it hits us. It's a smell. A smell that black dude tells us he recognizes as the son of a butcher. The smell of dead meat. We follow black dude and his super sniffer nose. What we find nearly kills us. It's nerd dude, although the body looks like it was torn apart. What's even worse is that. God guys I'm sorry but this is difficult for me to write, he was my bro you know. His body is infested with dudgots. It looks like it's been dead for ages. His copy of the Quran is, however, placed upon a tree stump that is next to him. We did what anyone would do. 
We all puked. After some sobbing and shouts of, Jesus, we run from the scene and get to a clearing. We're all hysterical. Then, rich dude looks nearly apocalyptical. I ask him what's wrong, apart from the obvious. He then says, if that was nerd dude, then who's back at camp? Oh shit. We all freak the fuck out. Nerd dude was our primary spirit expert and shit. He's not around anymore. As we begin to shout at each other, black dude, in the middle of one of his rants, just stops. Just as we're about to ask him what's wrong, he points directly ahead. It, s nerd dude. Or rather, what looks like nerd dude, it's not smiling anymore. Rich dude pulls out his empty gun and points it. The thing then puts on this completely inhuman smile, like ear to ear, face ripping smile and begins to make grunting noises. I didn't recognize them then, but those were the same noises we heard when we first left our camp. We're all shaking and then, when black dude shouts, run, we don't hesitate. As we run, we make sure to stick together. I could honestly feel the thing behind us, it was chasing us. We could barely see and when black dude tripped, me and rich dude slowed down to help him up, but in the meantime, the thing was right above us. It had literally jumped five feet in the air, and in one motion, hit me right in the chest. I later found out that that one blow nearly crushed by rib cage, broke four ribs and nearly killed me. I don't know how far I was flung, but I blacked out after that. In the end, I woke up, battered and bruised in the arms of that guy we met, the only thing I remember before passing out again was the guy whispering words and chanting while all I remember was his face and a bright light. I woke up in the hospital in Prague, the officers had found my body, on the verge of death on the edge of the forest. No one else was found. We went to the forest on July 5th. They found me on September 18th. We only spent three days in the forest. Hey stalker, hope you enjoyed the video. If I could trouble you, give a like and a sub, it really helps the cause. And since you're already here, why not watch the next video? Anyways, stay comfy. Cortisol is bad for you.